Introduction Mom, have you seen my needle? I dropped it right now and I don't seem to find it. I need to finish my craft work. Yes, dear. I'll help you find it. Let's get a magnet and look for the needle. What is a magnet, Mom? How will that help me find my needle? Children, in this lesson, we will learn about magnets and their properties. History of Magnets There is a popular legend that leads us to the discovery of magnets which involves an elderly Greek shepherd named Magnus. It says that Magnus was herding his sheep in an area of northern Greece called Magnesia about 4,000 years ago. Suddenly, the metal tip of his stick became firmly stuck to a large black rock on which he was sitting. To find the source of attraction, he dug up the earth to find magnetite, a natural magnetic material. This type of rock was subsequently named magnetite, which was named after Magnus himself. Origin of Magnets Magnetite is a natural magnet and contains iron. In the later days, this was more widely known as a magnet. A magnet is a substance that has the power of attracting iron. Magnets can also be made artificially. However, the process of making artificial magnets is a recent discovery. Artificial magnets come in different shapes, for example, bar magnet, horseshoe magnet, etc. Types of Materials Now let us look at the types of materials. Materials that are attracted by magnets are called magnetic materials. For example, screws, nuts, bolts are magnetic materials. Materials that are not attracted by magnets are called non-magnetic materials. For example, wool, cloth, bricks are non-magnetic materials. Poles of a magnet when you move a magnet over magnetic substances, you will see that these substances get attracted to particular parts of the magnet only. These are generally the two ends of the magnet. These ends are called poles of the magnet. Finding the right directions. Once you know about the poles of a magnet, you should also be able to mark the location of the poles. Let us now look at why poles are important to be marked in a magnet. We all know that to find directions we use a compass. This compass has a needle that keeps moving in all directions, but when steadied always points to the south. This helps us in finding directions accurately. This is why we need to mark the poles of a magnet. Making your own magnet. Let us look at the steps to create your very own magnet. Let's take a paper clip. Use a thick and strong magnet. Move the clip over the magnet repeatedly in the same direction. Perform this step 50 to 100 times. The movement needs to be quick. Now to check whether the magnet is ready, bring a nail close to the clip. If the clip does not attract the nail, then continue the same process for some more time. Keep in mind that the pole of the magnet and the direction of its movement should not change. Attraction and Repulsion Now that you know about poles of a magnet, let us look at the attraction and repulsion properties too. In the case of magnets, when the south pole comes in contact with the north pole, these get attracted to each other. This is better known as opposite poles attracting each other. Similarly, when the south pole comes in contact with another south pole of a magnet, they do not attract each other. In fact, they repel each other. This is better known as similar poles repelling each other. Taking care of magnets. We are now aware of the attraction and repulsion properties of a magnet. To keep magnets safe and in working conditions, follow these guidelines. Do not heat, hammer or drop magnets from a height. They will lose their property if done so. Keep bar magnets in pairs with their opposite poles on the same side. Use wood to separate them. Keep a piece of iron across the poles of a horseshoe magnet. Magnets should be away from computers, 
mobiles, television sets, music systems, and compact discs. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. A magnet attracts magnetic materials. The ends of a magnet is known as poles of magnets. A free magnet always points in north-south direction. Similar poles of the magnet repel each other, while different poles of the magnet attract each other.